In this video, we're going to look at how to move our character left and right. And that's really the beginning of our game. Later on, we'll think about baddies and maybe platforms that our character can jump up on and all the other things that make games really cool to play. But we have to begin with moving our character. Now, you can really choose any keys to move your character. Of this level, I'm going to get the crocodile to move with our left and right arrow keys. And later on, we'll work out how to do up, down, and maybe even jumping. So let's begin. To begin controlling a character, what I'm going to do first is just clean up the desktop here and just close down some of our tabs. When you want to work on anything in the game, it's best to start at dashboard and then move to the places you want to go. So in this case, I want to control our crocodile. So I'm going to double click him and you can see here we have the animations. We're not going to talk about that in this video. What we do want to talk about is not behaviors. Now, if you download something from Stencil Forge and you find a whole bunch of stuff here, well, it can work out well for you, but most of the time it's something that you don't want. So this is good in this case. We don't really have any behaviors. We'll talk about behaviors a lot later. What we actually want to talk about is events. Now, those of you who've used Scratch will instantly recognize these blocks over here and Stencil, very much like Scratch, works on blocks, so you don't really have to ever type code in Stencil. In Stencil, we want to add events to our characters, our actors, and anything else that's in our game. When you click on this, right at the top you have the basics. We have the three when creating, when drawing, and when updating. When creating only happens once when something is created. So, for example, you want a character to be on the left-hand side of the screen, or you want a spaceship to be blue instead of red. So you can do that there. When drawing is really talking about uh, writing on the screen, we're not going to worry about that now. So what we want to do is a when updating. A when updating is much easier to understand once you click it because you have an always. And what this means is whatever I put inside this block of always will always happen. That's kind of easy to understand. I'm going to immediately rename this thing here. It's kind of useless with the word updated. So I'm going to say move croc. So what I want to do now is move the character left and right if the person who's playing the game clicks on either the left or the right key. I'm going to take this a little bit slower now because I would like you to understand something really important in moving a character. So what we're going to do is start with our always and what we're going to do is put in a if and otherwise if and I'll explain that in just one second but let's go back to the game as it stands so let's go back to our level one and you can see there's a croc there and what I really want to do is tell this crocodile don't move at all unless somebody clicks left or right and this is very important we don't want our crocodile always moving left and always moving right so what I'm going to do is go back to our code and I'm going to start off with always go to our actor button go to where it says motion, which of course means moving. And what I'm going to do is say set the X speed of our actor, our crocodile to zero. Now I'll translate this again because it's not really clear when you look at it. It says set X speed, now X meaning in mathematics left and right. So set X speed to zero, zero meaning don't move. You have a speed of zero for self. And what self means, you have to always look up and say, okay, that means the croc. So set the X speed to zero for self means do not move. Set the speed to zero. Unless, and now we're going to put an if in. So always set the speed to zero and check if, and we're now going to go to user input, pick up one of these, kind of carefully put it in that space there and we're going to choose a control. In this case, I'm going to choose a right. So if the right is pressed, is down, I'm going to stick with down, go back to actor, go to the motion. And now I'm going to set the X speed to 20. We can always change that later. And now I'm going to add an otherwise if, go back to my user input, pick up a control, 
This time, instead of right, I'm going to choose left. And I'm going to go back to my actor and set the X speed to minus 20. Of course, minus being the other direction to this one here. So 20 is going forward, minus 20 is going back. Let's just see if this works. So we're going to test our game. Now, the first time you do this, it may well take some time. So I will just wait for a window to pop up and we should have a brand new game in there with a crocodile. And here you can see we have our game, we have the background and we have the crocodile. Now I'm going to click left and I'm going to press the right key and you can see that our crocodile moves absolutely perfectly, really smooth. And when you let go of the crocodile, of course, it stops moving because we told it unless you're pressing left or right, set the speed to zero. And that's how you get very quick left and right movement. Now let's go back and add an up and down. That's quite easy to do. So what we need to do is go back to our flow. We're going to put in an otherwise if and an otherwise if. Now, just to note, you should only ever have one if. And the rest of your ifs should be otherwise if. Now remember, an if is your computer will check to see if you're pressing the right. Otherwise, it will check to see if you're pressing the left. Otherwise, it will check. So it must really be an otherwise. You can't really tell a computer to do two ifs at the same time. So let's go back to our user input. We'll throw in the control, choose a control. This time we'll choose up. We'll go to the actor's motion. Now, of course, left and right is X speed. So what we really want to do is now do the Y speed. Now up. In stencil is really silly because you have to put a minus. Let's put that in there. And then lastly, what we're going to do is we're going to go back to our user input. Choose a control. This time it's going to be up. Excuse me. It's going to be down. Go to actor motion and we're going to set the Y speed to be 20, which is downwards like so. Now you might have spotted a slight problem. In that, we've got x speed to 20 and x speed to minus 20. And yet at the start, we've said if you don't click any of the buttons, set the x speed to zero. We've now added y speed and y speed, but we haven't told it to set it to zero anyway. That's something we should fix right now. And once it's checked all four of those, your crocodile should move up left down, right, whichever button you're pressing. So let's test the game again. And what we really want to see is the crocodile not moving right at the start of the game. That will be kind of a good thing. So the crocodile should not be moving unless I tell it to. Let's press left. Let's press right. Let's press up and let's press down. And you can see this crocodile is moving really well, very smooth. And now we have a working character. And that's how you make a character move. In our next video, we'll change the behavior of our character or our actor so that instead of going up and down, we might have our character falling down because of gravity and jumping around on things so that we're making more of a platform game rather than a floating crocodile in space game.